What's up, everyone? We've got some exciting new developments here today. Oh, I didn't say welcome back to my floor. Welcome back to my floor. I may not be sitting on my floor, but I'm standing on my floor. I mean, really, there's no other way to stand. Look at the princess. Are you like mid stretch? I'm not sure why she's sitting like that, but um, okay, as long as you're comfy. Okay, so the reason that I'm here today is very cool, very important. A little while ago, I did a video, which was kind of a hot mess. But it was also very important because I established at the start of that video that I had a new method of disposing of my paint water that was more environmentally friendly. Just to give you an update on the bucket that now contains all of my paint waste water. She's looking a little full these days. Oh my god! It's heavy! Ugh. If you can observe the water line on this bucket, we're about halfway up now. I knew once I was reaching this point that this was not sustainable. I cannot continue doing this. Now I have a second bucket, which I plan to utilize, but how am I, how am I supposed to keep up with the amount of water that I use in my art practice? And here's the thing, folks. The internet came to the rescue because I did a little bit more research on this method of paint water disposal and on the Golden Brand website. They have an entire article written which details how you can put certain minerals into your water and it will kind of congeal all of the paint solids in your water and kind of filter them out. So I have today received the final piece of this little science experiment that we're going to do. And I'm hoping that we're going to see on camera the result of this process. I'm kind of excited. I'm also a little bit skeptical. I'm hoping that this means if I continue filling up these buckets, I can be quick about it and filter the water from one bucket into the other bucket, dump that down the drain because it'll be safe to go back into the sewer system, and then just throw away the rest of the paint solids and we can restart the process. Ah, okay, we have our bucket. The other materials involved include aluminum sulfate and powdered limestone. The website seemed to indicate that you should want to use the powdered variety of this for the best results in your paint water. I know that you can get like more of a sort of granule type that you mix in with potting soil if I'm not mistaken because these are both gardening supplies essentially but apparently mixing both of them together into your water is what will get the paint solids to clump and then just sort of sink to the bottom. And then once they do that, then you filter the water and you can dump the fluids down the drain and then just toss the rest in the trash. And I also have rolls of litmus paper so that I can test the pH of my water because you don't want it to be too basic or too acidic. And I'm a little concerned about this process for a number of reasons. The first is it was a pain in the ass getting this lid on this bucket. It took like a freaking rolling pin that I had to smack it down because I didn't have a rubber mallet. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think I could easily pull this off. I might have to actually like get a hammer out of my closet and pull it up. The other thing is that I'm not sure if I should be doing this inside or if I should wait until tomorrow morning and do it outside because I don't know how safe these materials are for me or for my cat. I think it would be a little bit of a shame, don't you, if one of us became injured or fell ill because we had come into contact or inhaled any of the materials present here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully it won't be too much of a pain to do this because the idea behind all of this was that it was sustainable and something that I could do continuously over time. If for some reason that doesn't end up working out, then I really have to go back to the drawing board on this and find a new method. Now, to be fair, this might actually be an easier process when the summertime comes around because I can keep this bucket outside and the heat will make the water evaporate faster. If this aluminum sulfate and limestone thing does not work out. But the Golden website seemed to indicate that it would. They seem to know their stuff, so I'm choosing to trust them. And I have the other bucket on standby because I have a feeling that there's going to be some juggling where I go to filter the water from one bucket into the next. And I'm probably gonna have to reuse this lid to do that because the Golden website seemed to indicate that using coffee filters was the way to go. And I've already got that set up prepared, so just gotta figure out how to get this freaking lid off. 
I'm just not strong enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeble. <laughs> I just have a horrid upper body strength. Okay, this is for revisiting tomorrow. I'm not gonna get myself spun into a tizzy about it tonight. Let's see if this works, guys. Okie dokie, it's morning. I'm still in my PJs, but we're gonna do this now. And I chose like a very wet day. Everything's drippy. I want to see if this works. Okay. Now I'm kind of wondering if I don't have to remove the lid from this one bucket. I wonder if I'm careful and I don't throw my back out. If I can transfer the water from this bucket into this bucket just through the hole that I cut into the top of the lid. sludgy. Oh, it doesn't smell nice. Oh. Oh, that's really gross. Oh. I can't believe paint water can smell this foul. That's really disgusting. I would say that we have about two to two and a half gallons here. The article in Golden said that per gallon you should mix about three quarters of a tablespoon of aluminum sulfate and, or maybe it was half a tablespoon. And the other one was three quarters of a tablespoon per gallon. I'm gonna be a little bit experimental here. We are just gonna start from the beginning. Oh yeah, I also brought with me a mask so that I can be safe and not breathe anything in. So it said that for this stuff, that you want to dissolve it in water first before you stir it into the bucket. We're just giving it a good stir. It's kind of rocky. I don't actually know if it's dissolving. And then you pour it in. Oh God, there's just all of this left at the bottom. That's the aluminum sulfate. And we're supposed to stir this vigorously. I'm really glad I'm wearing a mask because this water did not smell nice when I poured it out from that bucket into this one. Okay, next up, we have our powdered lime. I'm going to open carefully. And I'm just gonna dump it in. Stir, 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 stir. Whoa, whoa, calm down there. It's like a whirlpool of mud. <laughs> it's so gross. Now I don't really see any separation. It seems to still be the same gray water. And yep, still pretty stinky. I'm busting open one of these litmus papers. Kind of a long one, but just cut it down. <gasps> oh my gosh! It's separating. Oh, that looks so cool. That is wild. And I'm sure that after a while, all of those solids. Let me take off my mask so you can hear me better. <laughs> I'm sure that after a while, just because of the settling and the time that it takes for it to sink to the bottom, that it is going to yield some actual clear water on top. But I do want to give this a test with my litmus paper, so let's just dip it in, shall we? Try not to get our hand wet. My camera kind of refuses to focus on it. Focus on the paper. There we go. I've never used litmus paper before. Is the, the result supposed to be instantaneous, or? Because if not, then this is a six. I guess six is the desired in the desired region. It said between five and nine. So I imagine this is fine. I'm sure I contaminated it too by touching it, but oh my god, look! It's sinking. This is science. <laughs> this is fascinating. I'm really impressed. I can't believe that this worked so well. Now the only thing is, like, do I mix in more? I had a lot of water. Or do I just let it settle? I think before I do anything, I need to rinse out the inside of this bucket a little bit better 
so that when I transfer the water back in here, I need to have some space to like filter the water back in and this seems to be the best receptacle for it because I refuse to remove this lid, but it's just still really muddy and murky in there. So let me do that real quick and I'll come back. You guys, I cannot believe how effective this is. Like the more time goes on, the more the solids just kind of like float down to the bottom and it becomes clearer on the top. That's amazing. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of entrancing to watch. Now I am gonna have to disturb this a little bit. Let's tilt the camera down, yeah, there we go. Give this another rinse and I'm just gonna add it to the water. It doesn't seem to be a whole lot. There we go. <laughs> just trying to dump it all out. Oh, it's disturbing things. This is just like, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is so cool. Look at that. It's like a it's like a glassy layer of clear liquid on the top and some kind of like pond scummy looking bubbles. <laughs> It just kind of disturbed all the solids that were in there. I am fascinated. Oh gosh, that is so wild. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this to sit for a little while. In fact, I should have brought the other bucket lid out here just so that it doesn't get disturbed or rained in. That would be horrific. But I think I'm just gonna tuck it away along this wall. I will return to you again for the filtering portion. A moment of appreciation for all the beautiful bird songs, though. I love spring. Okay, it's been a few hours. I've had a shower. I still put my PJs back on because let's be real, we're not going anywhere. Time to assess the damage. Moment of truth. <gasps> Whoa. I mean, it's not perfectly clear, but that is a vast improvement. That is amazing. It still looks kind of scummy. It's pretty gross, but it's still a lot better than it was. So I'm gonna filter this. I'll dump as much as I can. I might leave a little bit of water at the bottom because I'm gonna kind of skim it off the top and filter it through the funnel over here. Once I get down low enough, I'll see how much actual paint solids are there. And I'm just gonna leave that in the bucket for the time being. All right. Let's do it. I got my coffee filters here. I brought a couple out with me. Just gonna slide one into my funnel. I'm actually gonna bring this over here. And then I'm sacrificing one of these things. <laughs> it's like a Chinese takeout container or something. Okay, that was a pretty vigorous pour. Because this isn't as thick as my normal paint water now, it's actually gonna go through the filter a lot faster, I can already tell. There is still some sediment, but we're gonna see how far we can stretch it with one filter before we have to replace it with another. I'm not gonna lie, this noise makes me have to pee. Okay, this is taking forever. I'm gonna leave that to drain for a hot second and go make some tea and use the toilet. Do you hear that? We finally slowed to a drip with this much water left in the original bucket. You can see the original water level that we started with, so this is gonna take around three to four coffee filters, I think, in order to filter it through completely. Um, I'm probably not gonna fill the bucket entirely. I might dump it in sections so that I don't have to worry about carrying a very heavy bucket, but I'm gonna have to do it back and forth a few times, so yeah, swings and roundabouts. But anyway, I am very pleased with the outcome of this project. I will say that there is some sediment accumulating in the filter, and you can also see it around the rim of the original bucket that we used but I can't tell if that's paint solids or if it's the materials that we mixed into the water. At this point, it's irrelevant anyway because it's all getting strained through the coffee filter. So um, I'm, I'm very pleased. I am. I'm satisfied with this outcome. I think that this was a very worthwhile endeavor. And as you saw earlier, I got a bag each of the aluminum sulfate and the powdered limestone. I think they were each five pound bags and I used a tablespoon of each for this project. For 
two and a half to three gallons of water, maybe heaping tablespoons. So a little bit goes a long way. That's fantastic. This could sustain me for a very long time. What a cool resource. Thank you, Golden. I really appreciate the information that you've given me today. As a very, very, very small business, <laughs> it actually means the world to me that I get to do this and feel a little bit better about how I'm treating the environment in the process. Hashtag not sponsored, but if you ever wanted to sponsor me, <laughs> I love your products. <laughs> oh, you know what else? Um, I want to wait until this drains, but I do want to actually look at the state of the water that I've filtered through my coffee filter. Let me just, I'm gonna stop recording for the time being, but through the power of editing, you will see in just a moment exactly what the water from the inside looks like. Yo, look! Can you see that? Uh, amazing. The water is mostly clear. I feel very comfortable dumping this down the drain. I'm gonna go do that and then get my second filter going. All right, so I've gone through my second filter now and it seemed to filter through a lot more water without clogging up the filter. So I guess it was whatever sediment settled at the top of the water that went through the first filter, and now we are approaching the bottom of the original barrel here. I just want to show you how cool this is. Because of all the separation and all of the agitating that I've been doing with this container to like get the water out, we are definitely getting into some paint solids now, but like the more I agitate it, the more it looks like cool and swirly. <laughs> Let's pour another round, shall we? All right, this is working out well. Okay, it's the next day now. My hair looks like this. We're gonna go outside and see the result of our little project. I did come out here a little bit earlier today to do one final pour through the coffee filter and I'm going to show you the result and what's left over from the initial mixture <laughs> that I have in the one bucket and what has filtered into the other bucket, so. Okay, here's what remains. And as you can see, it's pretty much mud. I'm gonna leave this out here to fully evaporate and then find some way to remove it from the bucket, whether I have to scrape it out or what, I'm not even really sure, and then I don't know if how well you can see this in the filter, but there is like still some separation happening, but there's so much sediment at the bottom of this coffee filter that it can't actually drip all of the water through anymore. So there's just like this layer on top of perfectly clear liquid and then all of that muck sort of at the bottom of the cone. And then inside, let's move this out of the way, is some water and Oh, there's a little bit of sediment in there, so I might want to filter that again, but that is pretty much the end of the project. That's pretty cool, not gonna lie. We did a thing. Let's go back inside now. Okay, so some closing notes for this science experiment. I would say that the only true downside to doing this is that you have to go through, I don't know how many coffee filters, if you're filtering as much water as I did, which was several gallons, which, you know, is wasteful, but is it as bad or as impactful, negatively impactful, as flushing a bunch of paint solids into your sewer systems? I don't think so. The way that this is going to work out as of now is that all of those paint solids will just go into the trash and then all of that stuff will go into a landfill. Really the only way that you can't be wasteful when you're doing stuff like this is just to like not paint <laughs> and uh yeah i just don't see that happening anytime at least not for myself i really like painting and i refuse to start working with something like oils which i think is a little bit more dangerous and probably just as wasteful just in other ways who knows but overall i would say that i'm pretty much overjoyed at how successful trying this was and, uh, you know, I had my skepticism at the beginning to see, like, exactly what I was up for because I'd never done it before. I just, you know, put my faith into it and suddenly I have a very manageable means of disposing of yucky, mucky paint water. Do you have something to contribute? Just cuddles. That's all she ever wants to contribute. <laughs> In conclusion, this is a good method. I highly recommend it to all. It does require gathering of some materials, so you have to spend a little bit of money, and it does also require some time. It's a bit 
cumbersome to do all of that water filtering, but you know, once every couple of months, sure, I can make this work. I hope this has provided some information to all of you that you will find useful in your art practices. And if you want to see more art content from yours truly, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. I'll see y'all later. Uh, we'll do more art next week. I hope you have a wonderful time until then. Ciao, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> You're so sweet. You're such a sweet person. Mwah. Did you know I love you? <laughs>